Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a DIY reservoir chiller for hydroponics. Uh, first I'm going to go over the components and then I'm going to show you it assembled and operating. So the heart of this chiller is this thing. This is called a thermoelectric cooler or Peltier cooler. It is a solid state device that when voltage is applied to it, it moves heat. Um, Basically what it does is, when voltage is applied, one side gets hot, the other side gets cold. And the name of the game is, the cooler you can keep the hot side, the colder the cold side will get. Because this essentially makes a difference in temperature. So if the hot side is cold, the cold side will be even colder. To that end, um, I have a CPU chiller that will sit on the hot side and keep it as cool as possible. And this CPU chiller um, is able to keep the cold side of this Peltier at about room temperature, which is great. Uh, you also need thermal compound to attach the two. And then on the other side of this, which I can't show right now, but I'll show in the final setup, is a water block, an aluminum water block that will allow water to come in um, get cold and then come out. So that is another common device used in water chillers for CPU cooling on a computer. Uh, now to move the water through that block, you're gonna need a pump. I got three pumps here actually. Um, this one is the first one I tried. It was great, uh, but it failed at 10 days. I actually called it, uh, talked to Amazon, they gave me a replacement. The replacement failed in 10 days. So I love the size, I love the sound. This thing is silent, or, or is silent compared to these guys. And um, the cost, this was like $7, um, but it just does not last. So I can't recommend it. Uh, the next one I have here, this is, uh, mistakenly a air only so that was fun uh, figuring that out hmm that was not good was it and finally this is the one I'm using now um, it is large so it can pump four liters a minute where that guy was uh, one and a half liters a minute it's loud um, but it is powerful and reliable. It's been working for me. So you'll see how loud it is in a bit. Um, you will also need silicon tubing or really any tubing. Actually, you probably don't want something like this, um, because the light can get through and allow algae to grow. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't think it's been a problem for me. Um, and this is what I have, so it's what I'm going to use. But if you're buying stuff, you might want to get something totally transparent. Or totally um, not translucent. Uh, and finally, to hold everything together, you are going to want some hose clamps. I got these guys, which are pretty nice, reusable, uh, springy hose clamps. You kind of pinch them. Uh, I got a few different sizes. Those are nice. Uh, and a power supply. Everything I'm using here is 12 volts. So I have a 12 volt power supply to run it all um, with some of these Wago connectors. Um, this guy is a Meanwell, Meanwell power supply. Meanwell is a fairly well-known brand in the LED um, driver world. Uh, they are reliable. I had been experimenting with a different power supply that was not working well for me. Now the size of the power supply, 12 volts, and in terms of amperage, you're gonna to wanna to look at your TEC. Those last two numbers, 10, that is the amperage. Um, so this guy can theoretically draw 12 or 10 amps. Um, I haven't seen that. Um, so, but I guess, you know, maybe in the optimal conditions or maybe it's startup or I'm not sure. Um, this right here is three amps, and then this this fan is maybe an amp, probably less. 
So that puts us um, 13, 14 amps at uh, 12 volts. And this, this thing is more than capable of doing that. I don't remember exactly what it is capable of doing it. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. 12 volts, 29 amps. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Make sure your power supply can hit the currents needed. All right, I am going to assemble this and show you what it looks like all up and running. So the first step is gonna to be to sandwich your Peltier cooler in between your um, CPU fa fan and your um, water chilling block. Now you wanna figure out which side is the cold side. Um, and to do that, you wanna apply 12 volts for just like two seconds. If you apply um, voltage to this for longer than that, without a uh, cooling fan, you'll quickly overheat and destroy the device. And so I did that earlier and I found out this is the cold side with the lettering. Usually one side will have lettering and I think often that is the cold side. So you want your cold side to be um, against your CPU chilling block and you want your hot side to be uh, touching the fan. Okay, I got everything up and running. You can hear just how loud that pump is, um, but it gets the job done. And here you can see the aluminum chiller block that I got sandwiched in between the Peltier. Um, I got the chiller block, the Peltier, and then the heatsink. And all of that is going Oops. into the chiller, or into the reservoir. Let's see. Try to pull this up here. So you can see here, the full amount of force coming out. Um, and on the other end, But I essentially got a filter, which is some wire mesh, and then wrapped around that is this large tea bag that I got on Amazon. But that's what we're looking at. And the chiller has been working great. I will um, stick in some graphs that I've taken with showing the performance and um, yeah thanks a lot guys for watching and if you have any questions about this chiller design please leave them in the comments I'll try my best to answer them all cheers